Homily 20, From the Art of Salvation by Elder Ephraim, On Pain and Suffering in Our Life. The path of life is full of pain, tears, thorns, and nails. Crosses are planted everywhere. Uncertainty and sorrow are found all over. Every step is accompanied by Gethsemane. Every uphill road leads to a Golgotha. A spear pierces every person at each moment. If we could wring the earth like a sponge, it would drip blood and tears. As for man, his days are as the grass. He shall blossom forth as a flower of the field, remarks the psalmist. Psalm 102, 15. Beautiful things are accompanied by pain. Nevertheless, pain in turn leads to joy. Roses produce thorns, and thorns produce roses. The rainbow usually appears after a storm. Before the sky clears up, a downpour must first take place. Man, enlightened by Christian faith and philosophy, possesses the ability to discern and examine things much deeper than what is apparent on the surface. Within pain, one can detect joy and hope, just as Christ's triumph sprang forth from his painful passion and crucifixion. The most impressive statues have received the greatest number of strikes. Great souls owe their grandeur to the heavy blows of pain. Precious works of gold first pass through the fire of the furnace. Pain shakes the very foundations of man's existence. Pain is like a fiery furnace that burns and scorches. It resembles a downpour in a storm. The wise Solomon states, My soul in the ocean never remain calm. There are times when trials come in succession one after another, sometimes even all at once. The cross becomes very heavy then. Our apprehension peaks. The soul is ready to bend under the unbearable weight. Everything seems dark, pitch black. Darkness and dead ends fill the horizon. St. Gregory the theologian remarks, The good moments have passed, difficulties lie ahead visibly and tauntingly. The journey takes place in the darkness of the night. There is no light anywhere, and it seems as if Christ is asleep. Life's sorrows comprise nails and knives. These nails and knives mercilessly pierce and rip open human hearts. They set hearts ablaze, paralyze them, and destroy them. The only thing that remains during such moments is the cry that is addressed to God in the form of supplication. Have mercy on me, O Lord. My soul has been greatly distressed. I have grown tired with my sighs. My heart has become like melted wax. Have mercy on me, O Lord, because I am troubled. My life has passed in sorrow and my years with sighs. I have been forgotten like a person who has died. My tears have become food for me day and night. Why are you sad, my soul, and why do you make me unsettled? Psalm 22, 14, 31, 9, 42, 3, 42, 5. Man is the king of creation. However, his crown is woven with thorns. Man's journey at times sounds like a joyful song and symphony. Other times, most of the time, it sounds like an unceasingly sorrowful and mournful lamentation. Pain constitutes a great eternal enigma. It has been the topic of study for philosophers, social workers, psychiatrists, and many others. Even so, Christian faith and the law of God provide the most authoritative answer. The answer is twofold. Theologically, it is the consequence of the fall. Just like all the other evils, it is the result of man's incorrect use of freedom. It is the fruit of disobedience. Ethically, it is an opportunity and the means to acquire virtue and attain perfection. I will always honor God, pledges St. Gregory the theologian, no matter how many difficulties he allows to confront me. For me, pain constitutes a medicine of salvation. St. Basil the Great advises, since God is preparing the crown of his kingdom for us, let illness be a cause for virtue. St. John Chrysostom observes, Sorrows bring us closer to God. When we consider the eternal benefits of sorrows, we will not be distressed. The holy apostle Paul, who experienced such persecution and pain, who was full of the wounds of Christ, teaches that God allows man to suffer adversities. For our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness, Hebrews 12.10 God has thousands of ways to reveal his love for you. Christ can transform your misfortune into a melodious doxology. Your sorrow will be turned into joy, promises the Lord. John 16.20
Depending on the battle, there will be an analogous victory. You will not find inexpensive items in the shop of heaven. Moments of pain and sacrifice are actually a time of blessings. Behind every cross there follows a resurrection. What if we feel pain in Christ ceaselessly at present? Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. 2 Corinthians 4.17 The person who endures pain becomes an outstanding athlete of life who achieves glorious victories. He will be compensated with eternal awards. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for those who love him. 1 Corinthians 2.9 Whoever faces and deals with pain using the prism of eternity is already a victor. He is a select individual who, through his faith in God, has attained joy, has tasted the goodness of the Lord, and has become a prospective recipient of heavenly crowns. Such a person can repeat the victorious cry of the Apostle Paul, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8 With such spiritual dimensions before us, the ability to rise above pain and to transform it into liberating joy becomes a reality. It is a change owed to the power of God. It is a renewal, albeit illogical for people who use reason alone, and a natural outcome of Christian faith. This renewal remains an unsolved puzzle for the atheistic individual and wishful thinking for the earthly person. However, for the faithful person, it is an extraordinary miracle brought about by God. Enduring pain with a spiritual outlook leads to the solution of this great problem. It leads from darkness to light. Hence, we are obligated to welcome pain whenever it visits us as a blessing from God. Wheat is compressed and decays in the earth, but this is when it proliferates and flourishes. Blessed and bountiful is the harvest of pain. God's blessing abounds within the field of tears. This blessing is experienced by all who, with the gift of discernment, genuinely believe. God's blessing will be upon all who have passed through the furnace of various sufferings, with the aid of divine power and understanding. The eternal, immortal, and blissful rest in God awaits them. Amen. The holy mountain's great renewer, let us praise with hymns and missionary newly shining to America and the noble founder of many monasteries o star of nepsis and the prayer of jesus of the horn who brought holiness to arizona's desert land let us cry aloud Rejoice, O Universal Father. Uh.